conference this week with the television network Russia Today. It's had to start closing down its operations in the U.S. after sanctions from the EU, U.S. and the EU meant that its global feeds were shut down in many countries, including this one and in many networks. It's a hugely contentious issue. Russia Today has been accused of broadcasting propaganda and of broadcasting this propaganda to support Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But should you ban different points of view? Paula Slayer is the Middle East Bureau Chief for Russia Today. She's a correspondent for several international media outlets. She joins us now. Paula, good afternoon to you. You've worked for Russia Today. You're working for Russia Today. You're about to do a broadcast for them now, I presume. How do you define the output that's been broadcast on your channel? Look, Steve, I've been with the channel for 17 years, and I, the channel has never shied away from the fact that it is presenting the Russian government's point of view. And I'm comfortable with it from that point of view. It's called RT, Russia Today. We are very upfront about the fact that this is Russians' take on the world. Now, a lot of people accuse us of propaganda, but the argument is that what is one person's propaganda is another person's truth. And I would argue that the minute you start banning a broadcaster, you begin on a slippery slope and who knows where that slope ends. Certainly this is the government's perspective. Certainly what's happening now in Ukraine and, and my personal views on what's happening in Ukraine are irrelevant. Because I work for RT doesn't mean I automatically support it. But I, I support the idea of having a channel that can explain the justification and the way the Russian government views it. Um, in a way, to strengthen your argument, the definition of propaganda would be hugely complex. I would imagine a lot of what the former US President Donald Trump has said about Russia and about the invasion of Ukraine is exactly what you would see on Russia Today. I would say Fox News is propaganda for a particular group of people. If you were going to ban Russia Today in the United States, would you have to ban Fox News? I would completely agree, and I would say that a lot of people are not actually aware that Russian networks haven't been available in Ukraine for several years already. So you have Russian networks that are banned in Ukraine, and there is a sizable part of the population in Ukraine who actually supports Russia. They haven't had access to that point of view at all. And I would also argue that right now, when we have a massive military conflict on the go in Ukraine, now more than ever, there needs to be the opportunity to hear what the other side is thinking. Sometimes when I watch Russia Today, which pushes very much the same kind of line that the mainstream media here in Russia pushes, it's very different output to what you're witnessing on Ukrainian television, for example. Now, I'm not saying that one is correct and the other isn't correct. I'm just saying that when you have warring parties, both of them are talking to different audiences and both of them have their own justifications and their own assessment of what is happening. And a lot of what the Russian government is saying about this operation and why they did it is not making it into other media. Again, I'm not justifying the operation. I'm just saying that we need to respect our viewers and actually give them credit that they can actually sift through different sources of information and make up their own mind. So that would be the argument for you. The argument against you, Paula, would probably go like this. If a news channel lies and lies deliberately and consistently, we have our own experience of that in South Africa in the, in the last 10 years, but if a news channel lies consistently and deliberately, should it be allowed to call itself a news channel? Well, of course not. But, I mean, the underlying assumption in, in that question is that RT lies. And whoever's making that assumption, let me tell you that the way Russians feel, and Russians here feel that CNN lies, feel that, feels that BBC lies. Very often the accusation of lies is because somebody doesn't necessarily agree with the narrative. I can just tell you for myself, I have worked with the channel for nearly two decades, and I stand by the stories I've done. Very often, they are stories that reflect one point of view. They are stories that coincide with what the Russian government is thinking, but that doesn't make them any less accurate. So when I was reporting on the last Ukrainian war, I was reporting in the parts of the country that support Russia. Those stories are just as real and just as valid as the parts of the country that don't support Russia. Uh, and, and so in that respect, as long as stories hold up, to what we like to see still as journalism, and I would believe that that is not lying, that is trying to reflect accurately what people have told you and trying to put stories in some kind of context, then I think it's okay. I, I think these accusations of lying are also the beginning of a slippery slope because the accusations go both ways. Paula Sleep, thank you. Journalist, as you can see, at Russia Today, about to broadcast uh, from their studio.